Welcome to Inside Mental Health with Debbie. I am your host, Debbie Mulder. Girls now more than ever are being faced with challenges. And studies have shown that by age 14, girls' confidence levels have decreased by 30% in comparison to boys of that same age. On today's show, we have Tara Filto, who's talking to us about female mental health and how we can change this statistic. So welcome to the show, Tara. So Tara, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for having me. (laughs) Yeah. So let's talk about who you are. And from what I know and what I've seen from your work, you're a community advocate. Is that correct? Yeah, I guess I'm a self-proclaimed community, a parent and community advocate. Um, And I'm also the founder of a social enterprise as well called Mother Daughter Empower. But I love to give back to my community um, and get involved and, uh, yeah, and give back any way I can. Great. Awesome. And so from mother daughter and power, uh, we can talk about females, right? Yeah. I want to ask you, Tara, do you think that there's a negative stigma surrounding girls, females and mental health? Yeah. I mean, I think there's still, we've come a long way, but I think there's still a lot of stigma just in general when it comes to mental health. Um, And I think the stigma when it comes to, you know, women and especially young girls, I think there's a lot of pressure, right? So, um, you know, that kind of pressure to be perfect or to be the perfect mom or the perfect student. And so um, I think that that level of perfection also follows with that that stigma around mental health and and how that affects um, women and girls for sure. And so there definitely is stigma and and then that the question about why there's such a negative stigma it's it's just the pressure of society and what's been placed on females i definitely think so um i know obviously times have changed you know even from our generation till now um but the pressure still lies and i think especially on gr- on young girls more than ever um access to social media when you look at instagram and that level of perfection it, perfectionism that is just you know in our face constantly on a daily basis can really have an effect on our mental health and I think that level of perfection is uh especially when it comes to social media more geared towards towards girls uh than boys at least right now in in this day and age and having the perfect body having the perfect personality whatever that is that's uh... everything I mean when it comes to online most of us want to share um, the good stuff, not everyone sharing, you know, the raw and real. So we have kind of this, um, you know, perspective that everything looks fine and dandy and, and (laughs) this level of perfectionism, like we've never seen before. Um, but what goes on behind closed doors is very different than what we see and, you know, in, in our news feeds and, and, uh, you know, so, um, it's, it's really important to understand that those things aren't necessarily real, um, But when we're constantly bombarded with it, it's very hard to kind of, um, you know, take a step back sometimes. And I wish more people understood that, right, about the reality and the fantasy and how social media puts that. Yes, there's a very, very fine line um, when it comes to reality and and fantasy. And I think it's those lines are blurred now more than than ever with social media. In your opinion, do you think that females put off getting support for their mental health? Um, definitely. And I, I know like, even when we look at the stats that, uh, Cam H has produced, they definitely are. Um, I took some notes here, but, um, I think it's one, they say that one out of five youth will experience mental health. Um, and 60% of them say that they don't reach out for help, um, because of that stigma. So there's still a huge, I mean, I feel like we've come a long way, but obviously there's still, you know, uh, a lot of work to do. And part of that is that people just don't know where to go. Like the, the, the resources that are available, again, the stats show that um, four out of 10 people that actually go out and look for help aren't actually getting the, the help that they needed and they're still kind wow. of waiting. So I think that there's a lot of, of room uh, for growth in regards to, you know, policy and funding and, and, and really uh, having these resources uh, available because at the end of the day, our mental health is so important. I personally feel like it's just as important as our physical health. 
Yes. Um, but yet the, the, the resources available aren't as easy as, you know, picking up the phone and calling our doctor and making, making an appointment. Um, mm -hmm. So I think there's, there's a lot of room for growth there and there's still a lot of stigma. And a lot of your organization, well, your organization is geared to females. Absolutely. If you were to tell them about um, the stigma around mental health, how would you suggest we remove that stigma, especially as it pertains to females? Yeah, I, I think it really starts with the adults in the home. So whether you're a mom or you could be an aunt or a grandma, it really starts with you. Um, because I, I know like from the many interviews that I've done, our, our kids don't really listen to what we say, but they're watching everything that we do. Um, so the more that we can remove that stigma in our own homes or in you know certain conversations that we have, the better um, that our kids will grow up and, and, it, and, it, and they won't see any difference, right? I think we grew up where, you know, crying or talking about our feelings, a lot of, in a lot of homes that was shamed upon, right? So it's really important to kind of, uh, as a generation, move past that so that we can move forward and, and remove that stigma and really have these conversations, you know, with our kids, especially with our girls. I mean, with Mother Daughter and Power, we focus on girls ages seven to 14. So even that shift in hormones, hormones have a huge mm. effect on mental health and what that can do as well. So mm. I think really comes down to, you know, what kind of changes can you implement in your own home to start? And then, you know, obviously the government and the policy work <laughs> comes next, right? So it, it really starts at home in those day-to-day uh, -day conversations. Mm -hmm. And you, you're absolutely right, because that age, <laughs> and you've picked such a pivotal age, that age right there is where things just start to happen, things come to light. And if you don't have that support to help guide you through that, things could it, go left or right, right? Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's hard. And you know what? The thing is, is as humans, we're always prone um, to be reactive. Like once there's a problem, we want to fix it. So what we're trying to do really is to be um, proactive. You know, when we take the girls ages seven to 10, if we can, you know, implement some really great, uh, routines and when it comes to you know mental health and self love and all of these things at a young age, then once they reach their teen years, hopefully they'll have more tools in their toolbox that they can use, right? So that's that's the whole idea of what we're trying to do, and it and it really takes a lot of time and effort, and it's you know through generation you know putting down those barriers that we're going to see change. And I had this conversation with uh, somebody before where I would think back to my childhood. And think, you know what? I think I had anxiety as a, as a child, but was it ever identified? Did we even know what anxiety was back then? Probably not. No, Probably not. Right. right. It was really not talked about. And that's why I say like we've come such a long way where we have these different labels and we're able to identify what these things are. Um, I mean, most of us probably had some sort of, of uh, you know, childhood trauma or issues or anxiety, but it was just not labeled or not talked about um, in previous generations. So I think we've definitely kind of pinpointed and, and put some labels. And now it's really trying to get rid of those stigmas around the labels that we're working on. Absolutely. Now, Terry, you have a boy and I believe two girls. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So what is the difference between the way females view and address their mental health Versus the way males view and adjust mental health. Has that ever been something that you've considered and thought about? Yeah, I think it's a great question. I think that, you know, in some cases, there's a lot of uh, similarities, especially when it comes around the stigma. I think even when it comes to male, there's even more stigmas to mental health um, because males are supposed to be, you know, those macho figures. And so they're not supposed to cry and they're not supposed to talk about their feelings. So I think there's even more work to do around the stigma. But when it comes to the actual mental health issues, I think it's really, it really comes down to the individual. I mean, there's so many, um, you know, different causes to mental health, you know, it's, it, it, personal experiences. And I think, like I mentioned, hormones, I know for hormones, um, girls versus boys, it's such a different uh, a difference in hormones and that has a huge effect uh, going through those teenage years as well and how they deal with different situations. So it, I think it's really comes down to, you know, personal experience uh, and, and that can be so different for everyone. Um, but again, I think with young girls, when it comes to what they're exposed to and the pressures, that's 
that's definitely bigger for them. Um, and that's why we decided even as an organization to really focus on those young girls um, because there's a stat that says that um, girls and boys at the age of seven, their confidence levels are the same. By age mm. 14, a girl's confidence level will have decreased by 30%. Right. So we wow. see how there's such a huge shift there with that generation um, and those years for girls. Um, and I think that definitely has a, has an, a ripple effect on their mental health for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And you touched a little bit about the resources that are available for mental health, specifically for females. And maybe they are out there, but females aren't accessing them. Do you think that they're there? Do you think that enough resources, we just don't know how to find them? I think, I think there's, there's resources out there, but I definitely think that they're not, uh, that there needs to be more people that advocate for them. I don't think that they're as in your face as like the, the medical resources that are out there. So um, I think that, yeah, I think that parents really need, you know, parents, teachers, whoever's around, you know, your child needs to advocate for those resources and not give up because I think even, um, you know, when you walk into the doctor's office, they could perhaps give you some resources, but then once you start reaching out to those other resources that they've, that they've given you or the referrals, they might not actually have the programs and services. So I definitely think that there's a disconnect um, that that type of referral system needs to be improved. Um, and the fact that, you know, like Cam H just said, four out of the 10 people that reach out for help are just not getting the help that they need. So that's a problem. Yeah. Uh, and there definitely needs to be more, more support in that area. Right. Yeah. And then finding that support will help to eliminate the stigma that's surrounding mental health in general, but especially for females saying that it's okay to reach out. It's okay to um, look for those supports and, and get that treatment that you need. Yes, absolutely. And I think, you know what, the more that we realize that, you know what, our mental health is very similar to our, our, our physical health. Um, there's our, there are days that you don't feel good, you have a headache or whatnot. And there's days that you just don't feel good mentally. You don't have the energy and that's all part of our mental health. So I think that the more that we're proactive and, and that we're able to give resources when it comes to especially self-care and how important that is. Um, and actually, we just had a whole uh, theme, um, you know, last month about um, uh, self-care and how that has an effect on, on yes. your mental health. And yeah. even the definition of self-care, a lot of people think, okay, self-care, I have to go spend a day at the spa, but that's not what it is at all. It's really just being able to implement these little things on a daily basis that help, you know, bring our mindfulness and our calmness towards whatever we're doing. So I think the more that we're proactive, um, and there definitely needs to be more resources and education on, on being proactive, the more that'll take away from the stigma when, uh, when it comes to our mental health. Yeah. Oh, I, you said it perfectly, Tara. That's exactly what I feel is needed. And the fact that um, self-care is so huge and people neglect that. And you're right. People think that it is, it, it could be doing your nails. Well, what if you can't afford to do your nails? You know, like what, if, you know, what, what are some self-care techniques that you can use to really, really help and support your mental health? Yeah. So that's so, so important. We're going to take a break here. This is a good place to take a break and come back. And when we do come back, I want to talk about Mother Daughter Empower. I want to talk about this amazing initiative that you have put in this community and how people can get access to what you are bringing forth. So we will be right back. Awesome. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. At St. John Ambulance, we're all about community. We teach life-saving skills and provide community support through our volunteer services. All St. John Ambulance product sales and training registrations support these important services. Volunteer, donate, or enroll in a program today so we can continue to have an impact on our community. Visit sja.ca to learn more. At St. John Ambulance, we do more than save lives, we change lives. 
What kind of show do you want to see on Rogers TV? What interests you? Log on to RogersTV.com, fill out a show proposal, and tell us about your segment idea. We want to know what you want to see. Rogers TV, only on Rogers. All right, welcome back to Inside Mental Health. We have Tara Filto with us today, and she is a founder and CEO of Mother Daughter Empower. She's talking about female mental health with us today. So Tara, thanks again for being with us. Can you tell us a little bit about Mother Daughter Empower? This is a great initiative, a great organization, so needed. Can you let us know a little bit about it? Yes, absolutely. So Mother Daughter Empower is a social enterprise, and our mission is to empower the next generation of young girls to have the confidence to be who they are so they can grow up and become anything they want to be. And we really do that by inspiring moms to empower their daughters, because that's kind of where it starts. And uh, we offer, um, you know, different workshops, programs, and services for moms and daughters. We have a free online community and monthly mother-daughter uh, toolkit that we offer. And then we do the National Mother-Daughter Conference, which uh, is turning into an international one because we're doing it <laughs> online this year. Uh, thanks, COVID. <laughs> um, and we do mother-daughter retreats as well. So our, our goal here is to really you know, bring mothers and daughters together to connect, communicate, and create memories that will, you know, last a lifetime and learn and grow together. And we focus on um, girls that are ages seven to 14, um, because as I talked about earlier, that's really the stage where, you know, confidence uh, seems to take a shift and we really want to get in there and be, be proactive before the teenage years. That's amazing. That is so great. How do you, and I know that you have daughters, so how did you come up with this initiative. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a funny story. So <laughs> back in 2018, I actually ran for council in my local municipality in Innisfil. Um, and so I obviously didn't, uh, didn't win, um, but I learned so much through that experience. And I really um, kind of threw myself out there. Um, I was advocating as I still am today for better traffic safety in and around our kids' school. And, um, and I said, you know what, if, if, you know, I've been doing this for a while, let's just throw my head in there and, and you know, advocate for change. And so through this process, uh, my daughter was seven at the time, she's 10 now. She took such an interest in like wanting to come out uh, to all these events, door knocking, she was riding her bike while I was giving out flyers. And we bonded so much through that experience. And I learned so much more than I could have ever expected. Um, so through that experience, obviously she was learning as well. And she would ask things like, what is the difference between, you know, a mayor and deputy mayor? And I mean, at her age, I didn't even know who the premier was like, so <laughs> it was just mind blowing how much she was learning through this experience that I, that I thought I was, uh, you know, um, embarking on. So, um, once that council dust settled, I had enjoyed how much, you know, our, our, we had learned together and I was looking for more opportunities out there for moms and daughters, uh, you know, whether that was, you know, in community involvement or programs and services. Um, and as I was searching, I came across that stat that I mentioned earlier, yeah. uh, you know, that girls by age seven, their confidence levels are the same as boys, but by age 14, their confidence, uh, levels will you know, decreased 30%. And I thought, wow, like there has to be somebody out there that's doing something about this. And although I came across a few organizations, I couldn't really find what I was looking for. Right. So um, I spent a few months, you know, thinking, you know, this is something that we want to do. And I talked about Sophia and she was like, yes, we need to do this. <laughs> so, um, so lo and behold, uh, mother, daughter, empower, um, I think we, we came up with the, the name and the idea in February and June, 2019, a few months later, we had, we had launched. Wow. So it's been about an, a year and a half and that's, that's how it all began. <laughs> yeah. That is amazing because I even think about your daughter watching you and what you do and the, the how much you advocate and how much you speak up and just looking at you and saying like, I want to be that way. So when you put mother, daughter, cause you could have just said, email in general. Yep. A mother and daughter relationship. So huge. So I really appreciate you. Um, Thank you. That initiative. Thank you so much. 
<laughs> I actually joined mother daughter empowerment. My my daughter, she she's six months old, so she's not really ready to, <laughs> to join me out there. It is just so inspiring, and I thought, no, I want to be a part of this. I I need to be a part of this. And yeah, that's what people need to say, mothers. You know, say if you've got daughters, I need to be a part of this. Yes, yes. And a lot of a lot of it is really, you know, we live in such busy times or running to, I mean, I know COVID has this kind of a, at a standstill, but normally we're running through soccer practice, picking up the kids, <laughs> making dinner. And we really don't realize how much, you know, we're we're lacking that connection. So a lot of this is just really giving the time and space and place um, you know, to connect. And then um, making it very simple by giving the activities to do so that we're not having to look, okay, what do I do now? <laughs> right. the resources available. So can you tell us some of the services that you offer? And I mentioned retreats. Yes. And what are those services that you offer with Mother yep. Daughter Power? So the first one that we have is it's a free uh, membership for moms and daughters, and it's a monthly mother-daughter empowerment toolkit. So every month we have a different theme, and the toolkit uh, is emailed to you, and you get a positive affirmation that you can focus on for the month. You have a mother-daughter challenge that you can do together. Um, There's a journal entry in there as well. And so really, it's really to create this consistency of connection. So we we usually say, you know, once you get your kit, schedule it in your calendar, schedule at least an hour to go through it. And it really gives you an opportunity to bond, connect. The questions are already there to kind of, you know, learn about your child and your child can learn about you. And it's a different theme every month. So that's one, the first resources that I always talk about that we have available that's out there. And then um, we also have the uh, annual mother-daughter conference. Um, and so, I mean, I personally love to go to woman empowerment events, the way that you feel when you leave your so, and I wanted to create something like that for our little girls. Uh, so this, this is totally designed, um, you know, for girls ages seven to 14, the speakers, they have like five to 10 minutes because if not, you've lost the kids. <laughs> so it's really designed for girls, but I really feel like moms and daughters equally will leave feeling so inspired. So, yes. um, this year we're working on that event. Uh, online. So it'll be an online event in May. Um, And so you can find out all the details on our website. And then the other thing that we do is our mother daughter retreats, which is, um, you know, a weekend retreat, which is just a really, really awesome um, opportunity where we bring in yoga, meditation, different workshops, and it's an overnight thing where you really get to connect with your daughters and, uh, and and bond for like a, a whole weekend. So we kind of have the different levels of experience that we can offer. And we're working on a few online workshops as well. So yeah, that, in a nutshell, that's pretty much what we, what we do. <laughs> yeah, that is so sweet. I, I, I love that. I, I got seven years to wait before I did get to that. But so I, fast. So yes. <laughs> Soak it in. <laughs> Definitely. Now you have... Um, and you have this mission statement and I was reading it and I also was thinking, okay, what are your hopes and your dreams for mother, daughter and power? And that your mission really speaks to that. Do you mind just sharing like, what are your hopes for mother, daughter and power? Absolutely. So we want to create a, you know, a world where girls are, you know, have the confidence to be who they are and they can become anything they want to be. Um, and we're really on a mission to empower our young girls um, to do that. And, 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 and I think like it starts, like we mentioned before, you know, it starts at home, it starts with your mom. And sometimes we think we, it doesn't necessarily have to be a birth mom. You might be an aunt or a grandma or a sister that can take on that role in a girl's life. And it has such a huge impact. So, you know, if you see a child that's in need of that type of mentor, you can step in and do that. It does not necessarily need to be the birth mom. Although I think we have such a huge impact, um, but you can definitely take on that role as a, a, as a mother figure in a child's life. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because there are people that would sit and say, well, I don't have a daughter, so I can't participate in this. You know, I, I have uh, three boys and my daughter didn't come along to the end and I think, well, how could I be part of this? Yeah. Right? But even if you have a niece, um, you know, granddaughter, you know, just somebody that really needs that. Absolutely. That absolutely. And, and even like you think, at, even as a grandma, what an awesome time to take your granddaughter <laughs> off for a weekend or to attend an event or right. an opportunity for an aunt to be more involved uh, with her niece. So it really can, 
you know, it's called mother daughter and power because it's that motherly role and we're really focused on moms, but that, that motherly role can be taken on by, you know, um, almost anyone that wants to. Absolutely. So fantastic. How do we as a community help support this organization? Wow, that's a great question. Um, I think just by, I think putting in the effort, like if you're a mom um, and you want to support the movement, become a member. It's free. Uh, join our email list um, and, you know, come out to the events if you're able to and just kind of put put in that effort, right? And, um, you know, I think that's the best way and then sh share any information or we share a lot of stats. Uh, we have a weekly uh, mother-daughter empowerment show. So I think just by sharing the information, it has a ripple effect. There might be somebody out there that needed to see that or hear that that day. So just by sharing the information, I think as a community is, is a great, great way to help. Fantastic. So fantastic. Now you just mentioned that you have a weekly show. Where can we find the show? Yeah, so um, the best way to find it is on social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, at Mother Daughter Empower. We post it on our IGTV, and then we reshare it on our Facebook page. And then we take the audio and we pull it into a podcast. So if you're driving and you just want to listen to the episodes, you can do that as well. Wow. Wow. So there's so much, there's so much opportunity to be a part of this, to really make a difference. The last thing I'm going to ask you is, I don't know if you've mentioned this yet, but um, you want to reach 1 million, <laughs> one <Yeah>. million <laughs> females, what, whatever that is. And I, I, I really want to help you do that. And Thank I think it's so, so, so important and the message that you're spreading. So I really want to thank you for what you're doing. Do you have anything that you want to say before we go? Is there any other thing that I missed? I want to make sure that we get... No, I think this was great. I think that if anyone wants to reach us, they can reach out on social media. And um, our website is www.motherdaughterempower.ca. And you can sign up for our free membership there. And I think that's a great way to get involved and get started. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so, so much for being with us, Tara. I really appreciate it. We've learned so much. And I, I want to encourage you and I want to say go for it because you are on a mission and it's, it's wonderful. So well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. This was a, a real pleasure to be here with you today. Um, and thank you all for tuning in. And please remember that you are not alone. Let's help to erase the stigma of mental health together. Take care.